This is me and Kaku. How's it going you guys? Welcome to the video. So for some reason the audio on a lot of these videos got super screwed up. I have no idea why, but it's totally messed up. So I gotta do a voiceover for a couple of these clips. Um, basically I just wanted to go through the intake manifold with you guys and show you all what you need to keep and what you can get rid of because there's a lot of emissions lines and uh, coolant lines that you can get rid of that you don't need. So here's all what you can get rid of. Just random ass vacuum lines for emissions and a, there's a coolant loop that runs through your throttle body and intake manifold. I don't know why because you're just heating your intake manifold and throttle body but don't need it so you can just get rid of all that. These two ports here are for your heater core so if you're going to want heat you're going to want to keep those. These two are some vacuum ports, the big ones for your brake booster and the small ones for your fuel pressure regulator which I use for my boost gauge as well. Uh, all this is for your idle air control valve, so you're going to need to keep that. Um, this is the other line, or one of the lines for your heater core. So keep that, and if you don't want heat, you can obviously just cap it off. There's the other line to the heater core, and then where that blue cap is, is where that's one of the lines for the loop through the throttle body and intake manifold. So just cap that off if you want, or if you are running water lines to your turbo, then that's what you will use for one of them. Now for the crankcase ventilation, this is all what you can get rid of. So we need to vent the crankcase, and with the stock setup, it comes off the crankcase there, and up those four vacuum lines into each intake runner. So there's always a vacuum in the intake manifold when you're naturally aspirated, so it's just sucking any of the pressure in the crankcase back into the engine. But now that we have boost and we're pressurizing the intake manifold, we're not venting it at all. So what we got to do is just come off the air oil separator or off the crankcase there where that brass fitting is I have and we're just going to go to a catch can and then vent that to atmosphere. And then we're also going to run the line off the valve cover to that as well. There's where I've deleted the EGR. You just take that off and put a cap on it. You can buy the caps or you can just cut them yourselves and put some liquid gasket, cap that off. So these two lines here are the coolant loop through your throttle body. You can just leave those open or cap them off if you want. And then down below here, those are the two for the intake manifold. And then off of this water line is where I've just capped off. That would be the other end of the loop. Um, if you want, then that would be what you would use for your other water line for your turbo. So I want to put the turbo on, but before I do that, I wanted to show you, I actually ported my wastegate some more. So for those of you who have seen my other videos, you know I struggle with overboosting for a long time. And I got it ported, I sent it back to get ported. You can't really see, but all they did was put a super tiny groove along this edge into the hole there, but I did absolutely nothing. So I ported it myself, basically just took a Dremel and just shaved away at the bottom half of this circle so you can see where the flap sits it was that width the whole way around so I opened it qu up quite a bit um, so yeah hopefully that will help oh. so I honestly have no idea where we're at right now in this series I haven't edited any of the footage and I feel like I have so much but hopefully this is going to be a start to a new video. So I picked up the engine hoist and the engine's pretty much ready to go in. So I just need to grab a couple things off the other engine, like the uh, main crank pulley here, which I broke when I was trying to pull it off. Do you guys remember? Cracked it, so don't want to use that one. 
and then just stuff for like the tranny like the uh, clutch fork and that so I want to get the fuel rail on and then we'll get my dad's car out of here and start getting the engine ready to pull well it's pretty much ready but just hook up the hoist and that and then I'll have to get someone to come help me all right so I replaced the o-rings on the injectors don't want to reuse these so replace those and put a little bit of grease on them just to help them pop in all right so I'm gonna put the oil drain and oil feed on this is my oil drain it's dash 10 an bung right here on the oil pan I have a 90 and then a 45 and it works perfectly Alright, so I got my oil filter sandwich plate on, it's Glowshift is the brand, um, basically it just goes between the filter and the block and gives you a bunch of ports so you can run things off them, so I got my pressure gauge here, or pressure sensor, and then my feed for my turbo, which comes around the front here, onto the top of the turbo, and then... I hooked up my 5 8 hose to the PCV because it's kind of tight and I don't want to do it when it's on the car. So I'm basically just going to leave all of it coiled up on here because I'm not sure where I'm going to mount the catch can yet. So I'm just going to leave that hose there for now. So I'm done everything that I need to do on the stand. So we're going to take it off the stand now, put the clutch on and the tranny, and then it'll be ready to go in. Oh, and I got to do that. All right, so I'm going to be putting the clutch on now. I got a... Uh, white bunny competition clutch it's good for like 450 horsepower I think and it's similar to stock but also grabs a lot harder so what I mean by similar to stock is the pedal feel it's not like super stiff which is what I want I don't want it to be super stiff because I'm gonna be daily driving it all right I just realized I actually can't put the clutch on right now I forgot that I need the dust cover it goes on before the flywheel and that is there so I gotta pull the engine shout out to the homies for helping out That's what we need. All right, so I'm gonna put the distributor on now and I wanna show you guys how to get it set properly. Now I've marked this one, you can see paint right there and two paint lines right there because when you pop it out, it's gonna twist, so. Okay, so you can see how much it rotated there. So, so this is another one of the videos where the audio got screwed up, but basically what you're gonna wanna do is just line up the line with the big dot on the rotor there, not the small dot. Once you push it in, it's gonna rotate to the small dot, like this, but you're gonna wanna line it up with the big dot, and I think that's where a lot of people get screwed up. All right, so I'm gonna get the transmission ready to put on, so basically I'm gonna just pull off all the sensors off this one, because they're better, I know they work, and I've wired pigtails on them, so they're easy to wire in, just wrap them underneath. Um, so I'll take those out, Teflon them, thread them in, take the speed sensor off it, and then we'll get the throw it bearing and the clutch fork set up.
All right, so everything metal in here, any metal on metal, you want to grease up. So right in here on the clutch fork, where it's gonna sit on this ball, put some on the ball too. Alright, so pretty much finished up here. I'm just gonna hook everything back up, get the power steering pump on there, AC, uh, drive shaft, the fan, radiator, pretty much everything. I'm not gonna film a whole lot of it because I just honestly wanna get it done and it's pretty much just a matter of hooking everything back up how it was before. So yeah, I'm gonna do that and then I'll get back to you guys. All right, so I finished a lot of this stuff. I'll show you guys all what I've done and what has to be done still. So we'll start underneath here. So I got the drive shaft in, got the exhaust hooked up, got the speed sensor in, uh, the shifter and shifter plates on, transmission mounts hooked up. Uh, that's the reverse sensor. So when you go into reverse, the lights come on. Got the clutch slave cylinder on there. Starters in, uh, oil pressure, gauge is hooked up, and wired. We got everything underneath here wired, like the alternator and the starter and that. We got the two lines of the heater core hooked up, fuel lines hooked up. I got brand new belts that I just put on, so I got all those on. This one's not tight, I gotta put the fan on before I tighten that one. Power steering's hooked up, AC's hooked up. I put some fluid in there. So yeah, next step is to get the fan on, the clutch fan, and the radiator, and the shroud in. Just got the boost controller on. So basically, you just run one line off the compressor. It goes through the boost controller, you can adjust uh, the spring tension and then it's supposed to be a no leak boost controller so it won't let any pressure pass until it reaches your set point then it'll open and send the pressure to the wastegate and start opening the wastegate so the idea is it just keeps the wastegate closed longer completely closed which will uh, build boost faster alright so I just took out my carbon canister part of the uh, emissions crap so, there's three lines on it. One is just a purge line that goes to atmosphere. One is a vacuum line from all those vacuum lines that we ripped off the intake manifold. And then the other one goes to the fuel tank. So you can get rid of all these, except the one that goes to the fuel tank has a check valve in it right above the fuel tank. And if you don't remove this check valve, then you will be pressurizing your gas tank or you won't be venting it. So it's this line right here that runs to the fuel tank. It's a hard line that runs along the frame here, up top here, underneath the car, and all the way to the back. And if you follow that all the way, eventually it'll go to a rubber hose. So from underneath the car, I cut that rubber hose right here. And then you gotta go 
or to where your fuel pump access is. It's basically sitting right down here. So I just reached in there and this was on a bracket and I just ripped it off. Because once you cut this line, you can just rip it off and pull it back, pull it in here. And then here's the vent line that uh, hooks up to the other side of the check valve. So as soon as I pulled it off, I could hear it. A bunch of pressure came out. So now what we're going to do with this, I'm going to put a coupling in here, connect another hose to this, and I'm going to run that to the back of the car and just vent it to atmosphere somewhere down low. Alright guys, I'm going to end this video here because today I'm going to be starting this thing. So I'm just going to finish up the details right now and fire it up and I kind of want that to be its own video. So that's what you guys can look forward to in the next one. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace out.